All right, what's going on guys? It's Oh My God Tiger here. In today's video, I'm here to show you guys how to replace your clutch master and clutch slave cylinder. So I got the two parts right here. They are not OEM, but I bought them online from my work. So yeah, so right here we have the clutch master cylinder right here. And over here we have the slave cylinder. So pretty sure it'll fit. I already checked and it looks like it will fit. So I think we're good. I bought them from my work. I think this one was only 15 bucks. And this one was around 22 over here so i got a pretty good deal and uh you probably can too you could probably find this somewhere around the price range of 40 to 50 bucks to replace this now it's not gonna be oem but it'll definitely work so the reason i'm doing this is because mine has some sort of leak i still can't find the leak but my clutch reservoir just keeps emptying and it definitely is not the tube back here i already checked so but yeah, so in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace these two components on your Acura Integra. So anyways, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and start off by emptying all the fluid out of the clutch and we'll go from there. So I got a little tube over here from Home Depot. Hopefully it'll work. I'm just going to empty it and this will help with bleeding it after too. So you can make sure there's no air bubbles in it. But yeah, so I got this at Home Depot. I believe, what is it? It's a one fourth or three eighths, I don't know, 10 foot long, whatever. You could find one, it was only three bucks and it basically fits right onto the slave cylinder. So you could drain it and then afterwards you could bleed it and make sure there's no air bubbles in it. All right, so I rigged this little thing up. I got the tube and it leads down into a little Gatorade pipe just to drain it all out. And then I have a eight millimeter wrench here to loosen the little nut here. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead, loosen this up and get all of it out of here. So. As you can see, the tube did rotate, so let's make sure that goes in there. There we go. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna go inside, pump the clutch. Hopefully that doesn't fall off. All right, for this next part, I do suggest you guys put down a towel on your car if you don't wanna mess up your paint, because if brake fluid gets on your car and it gets on the paint, then it really does screw it up. So anyways, yeah, so the next thing I'm gonna do is take off this little 10 millimeter socket right here. Pretty easy. All right, so once you get this little tube out, it'll be kind of hanging there. And then it, there's two 12 millimeter bolts on the bottom you need to take off, and then it'll basically just pop off. So yeah, like I said, after you get those two bolts out, it'll basically just fall out. And there probably will be some excess clutch fluid in there, so just beware. I put a little towel down there. But yeah, so here is the old one. And it looks exactly like the one that I'm gonna put in. So let's go ahead, let's install the new one, and then we'll move our way to the clutch master cylinder. All right, so I just got the new one in. It's gonna look a little weird until you get some fluid in it, but same steps, put in the two bottom uh, loose, and then put this one in, tighten this one, and tighten the bottom ones. And then, yeah, so there's the old one. And now it is time to move on to the master cylinder. All right, so moving on to the master cylinder, what are you gonna do first? I'm just gonna go ahead and get the reservoir out of the way. You don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna do it because it makes it a lot easier and it's only two bolts. And uh, so yes, we're gonna disconnect this hose back here with the little clamp right here. And then these two bolts, which I believe are a 12 millimeter. All right, so I was actually wrong. These were actually 10 millimeter bolts, but whatever. So yeah, we got that out, disconnected the hose pretty easy. And then now we're gonna disconnect this little line back here. And then we're gonna have to do the rest in the car. All right, so the next thing you're gonna wanna do is take off the master cylinder. Now, this is kind of a pain to crawl under your dashboard, but as you guys can see, mine definitely is leaking, but there's a bolt right there, and then there's a bolt on the other side. And then you also have to release a cotter pin, which I'll show you guys right now. All right, so as you guys can see, the cotter pin, if you guys hit, it'll focus. But yeah, it's bent. It has all the things bent on the side, so you have to bend them outward, and then you have to pull it out. So that's what I'm gonna do first take a little cotter pin so you got to bend these out and then pull it out all right so once you get the little cotter pin out as you guys can see it's right here but uh yeah so i got that out next thing you want to do is push this little thing that the cotter pin was on push it all the way through and it'll come out just like that so i suggest putting the cotter pin back in here because that is pretty crucial and you do not want to lose that so put that in there for now but yeah so now it's basically released as you guys can see it's flopping around now we just have to release those bolts and we can take it out all right so i finally got it out from inside now 
I had a little bit of problem on this little screw right here. It's kind of stripped, but I'm gonna try to get it out now. But yeah, inside car is probably the most painful part, but now the hard part's over. We just have to get this off. All right, so it's a couple hours later. Now I went to the junkyard because of this one reason. So whatever you do, make sure to use a flare wrench for this bolt, otherwise this will happen. So I tried using a normal wrench and as you guys can see, it got completely rounded out. So you're gonna need a 10 millimeter flare wrench. What the flare wrench does is it goes through here and it gets a better grip on this so you could do it. But this thing is completely rounded out. So I had to go to the junkyard. This one's completely bent. I actually ripped it out of my car because I was so pissed. So I took the whole thing out of my car. So I went to the junkyard and I picked up a new line right here. So thank God they had one. We got really lucky. But yeah, so I'm gonna have to install this too. But yeah, so make sure to use a flare wrench and you won't have the same problem as me. All right, so I finally got that new line in that I got from the junkyard. It was kind of a pain in the butt, but I got it in there. Got it down here, so basically screwed this back in. But make sure to use a flare wrench. Otherwise, you will do what I did, and it's a big fat pain in the butt to replace. So yeah, so there it is. Now we're going to go into the car, replace, put the cotter pin back in, put the two screws in, and then put the reservoir back in, and then we're basically done. All right, so we got everything hooked up. Now it is time to bleed the clutch. So I got some DOT brake fluid here, DOT3, it'll work. So we're gonna pour this in. I'm gonna try to attempt to do this without a vacuum bleeder. I don't know if it's possible, but we're gonna go ahead and try. So I'm gonna put it in here, go inside, pump the clutch once it's empty, pump it in. But don't let it run out completely until you see that. You, you wanna get it before it goes flat, otherwise there's gonna be air in the system. So we're gonna put it in, go inside, pump the clutch, and hopefully we can get this thing bled. All right, so we're finally able to bleed the clutch. So what you're gonna wanna do is have somebody in the car. You're probably gonna need two people for this. It's the easiest way. So get a friend, family member, whatever, and have them pump the clutch, have them hold it down to the ground. And when they say open, open it up, let it split, spit out, close it, and then they pump it again, have them hold it to the ground, open it, keep doing that over and over until it's stiff again. So that's what we did. Again. And then also, you might have to uh, adjust the little pin back here where you put in the cotter pin back over there, and uh, so your pedal is in the same position. But yeah, so that is basically it, guys. That is how you replace a master and slave cylinder and also to bleed it afterwards. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out, guys.